Jerry Seinfeld once said, I saw a study once that said that speaking in front of a crowd of people is the number one fear of the average person. Number two was death. This means that to the average person, if you had to be at a funeral, you would rather be in the casket than doing the eulogy. <laughs> However, it doesn't have to be in front of a crowd of people. Communication on any level requires boldness, patience, and commitment. Today, I'd like to discuss the tremendous impact that communication has on us and why I feel that investing the time and effort into persevering through difficult communications is vital. For me, as a son of liberal Jews who immigrated here from the former Soviet Union, coming to St. John's, a Catholic school with a largely conservative student body, was certainly an unexpected choice. A choice that would require me to adapt to many perspectives very different from my own. Now, I know that my situation is not completely unique. It's a common human phenomenon, the feeling of not perfectly belonging. However, I feel that my approach to this situation has allowed me to ultimately gain from it and learn many important lessons, rather than being left hopeless and frustrated. Prior to coming to St. John's, I was surrounded by those whose ways of thinking, particularly political views, were very, very similar to mine. In fact, not a single one of my friends, not a single one, was politically conservative. As a result, I came to expect that it would be very, very difficult, if not virtually impossible, to be friends with someone with different political views. And that is exactly the issue I see in our society today. With the tense political climate, there's just outright hostility towards the other, and that, to me, is just ridiculous. Fast forward about two years, and on a fine spring afternoon, feeling inspired, I decided to join the Drama Guild here at St. John's. Now, as can be expected, with joining any new activity, things were slightly awkward at first. Many of my stage mates already knew each other from other productions, and the exploding COVID pandemic certainly did not help. I really had to put myself out there. Now, I will admit, at the end of my first production, a raw and unconventional rendition of the Midsummer Night's Dream, where I literally played a wall, I made several friendly acquaintances, but no true friends. Further, as COVID continued to ravage our society for the next year, such is the case for the next show as well. Things started to change at the end of my sophomore year when I found one of my budding friendships to be instrumental in showing me the fruits of respectful communication. I started to go grow closer with, let's call him Charlie, through the spring production of my sophomore year. He was everything, he was the epitome of a strong actor. His comedic antics, his expressiveness, his energy that he brought to the stage. I admired how he could truly be himself and enjoy himself in front of a group of people. And through this spring production, I started to grow closer and closer with Charlie until I considered him one of my best friends at St. John's. Now, one day at rehearsal, after discussing the news for a bit, I learned of Charlie's very strong conservative views. And this was truly a moment of reckoning for me. Here, I had an opportunity. I had an opportunity to revisit and rethink my perceptions of opposing views, opposing ways of thinking. I was presented here with a challenge to change my own mindset. Now, I want to be perfectly honest. After that day, it truly was a struggle to not let Charlie's political views get in the way of my perception of him and his character, which I had admired for so long. However, as the weeks and the months passed, we learned to actually embrace each other. I learned to listen to Charlie, and we learned from each other's feedback. Now, there are two specific ways in which I feel Charlie and I have both greatly benefited, among many others, of course, from our friendship. On one hand, we've learned to learn from each other. We've learned to accept each other's views, and at times, this has even led one of us to shift our views on certain topics. On the other hand, though, let me be completely realistic and honest. To this day, Charlie and I disagree on pretty much every single political topic we discuss, but that is okay. We've learned to do that in a mutually respectful way, and that has made all of the difference. That has taken resilience and practice. 
Whether it's a political debate, a school board meeting, as we've seen many times, or just a small disagreement within a family, we have seen the tremendous negative impacts that political polarization has had on our society the last couple of years. Today, I'd like to say to you all that I see hope. For my weekly visits to the Young Republicans Club as a representative of the Young Democrats, or my daily fist bumps or handshakes or jokes, whatever it may be, with Charlie, I have changed as a person. I've learned to truly, truly judge someone for who they are rather than their political views. And that is perhaps the most rewarding gift of all. So I urge you all today to take that extra step. Dive in to difficult communications. See them as opportunities rather than walls of fear and hate and as obstacles. Whether it's an apology that you've been meaning to make to someone and haven't because of your ego, or if there's that one person who's super interesting, you've always wanted to talk to them, but you can never seem to agree with them on anything. Do not hesitate. And I know very well, trust me, that many times, maybe even most times, it won't necessarily work out just realistically, but try. For if you take that extra step, if you go that extra mile and try to see someone's story and respect them for who they are, that can make all the difference. Thank you. That's it for 